do you have like favorite pieces which you always would play first or when you like in a, in a, when you start rehearsing like you, you play when I start practicing from practicing um, I mean as a musician I've been taught always by my very strict Russian teacher you always start with scales in the morning so it actually it kind of burned itself into my brain and I really do that every morning I cannot start practicing without at least playing it, it became became less and less and less but now it's at least playing 10 minutes five to ten minutes of scales it used to be like almost an hour uh, of scales and then uh, in different variations of course and now I just play a couple of times very slowly very relaxed some scales is for me it's kind of the almost like morning prayer and just cleaning your ears clearing your head and just play a scale if you play a scale a couple of times in tune it's kind of you have the whole repertoire of, of notes for the day ready at your disposal and your ears are ready to to now practice pieces so i'm wondering like can you ever really enjoy a movie just as a re relaxing thing can you ever go to the cinema and just relax and watch this movie or are you constantly looking like oh wait you did it like that and why do you do it like that and like can you ever switch off i think i can't switch off I'm, 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 I'm thinking about this sometimes by myself, but I can enjoy also. I can sit, if there is like uh, Babel, for example, we were talking, when we were talking about yeah, Inaritu, yeah, yeah. like movies which really like moved yourself. So Babel is a movie and I was in that movie and I was really like uh, overwhelmed by the quality and the story and the emotional parts and everything. and. I can let go, of course, but in, on the other hand, I have a, a very clear perception of what is happening there. What is the lighting? What is the camera? Blah, blah, blah. And sometimes, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm thinking because it's my job. Uh, how did they do that? Of course, because I can do that. And it's not like annoying me or, or, or destroying the illusion. Not at all. It's, it's fine, absolutely. And if the movie really touches me, it touches me anyway. So. Yeah, but when I see your career, I mean, you're pretty young. It like it looks like it's it was fluently going, going up. Like it's working pretty well. But I guess it's a lot of hard work in it. Well, in my case, I was just extremely lucky. I guess I had never any uh, bad experiences, or did I have to uh, kind of really push for something? aggressively to get it or anything I really just let it flow and it could have gone completely in a different direction I could be homeless now it could have been the same the same chance 50 50 I'm either homeless or I'm where I am right now like I didn't force anything so I was just lucky I would say I had no other explanation for it but a lot of hard work of course in when it comes to music making and practicing of course I practiced a lot many 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 hours and um, but again, it always felt natural to me, so it was it was really pure luck, I would say. But there's also this competition thing in your in your field, huh? Like I mean, yeah, for musicians, uh, I don't know how it is for for you. Maybe you can tell me after. But of course, for for young musicians, competition is a big part of, of our lives, depending on where you want to go. I wouldn't say I make a big jump through competition, but I've done a lot of competitions in my youth <laughs> no in my i mean until i was 20 i'm 24 now I, it was actually very very clean until i was 20 exactly I, I did a lot of competitions starting from eight eight age of eight with the local competition in my it was never it never felt like a competition that was a good thing about it It was just like meeting your friends that you see in music school anyway and you're all playing now for, for your family who are sitting there and they, you all get like a diploma Mm -hmm. it, it all started in a very very friendly atmosphere and always a positive experience oh let's 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 practice now harder than we used to practice before because now we're going to play for everyone and i want them to uh, to like my playing i was so lucky that always in competition i managed to just be stay relaxed and the moment when it really mattered i was able to to show my best and uh, i don't think anything can really prepare you for that of course i practiced so much and harder than ever before. But if you go on stage and you suddenly get nervous and you feel uncomfortable, then I guess it's hard. 
And I was lucky to just be on stage and not be nervous in that very moment. How do you get your ideas for for shots? Like, does it ever happen again? That cliche, like if you're walking through a city or something, and then you think like, okay, this actually looks pretty cool, and then you try to remember it, or you write it down or something, or or you just prefer to sit alone in your room and just think about it with closed eyes, or is it a lot of looking through different movies and directors that you respect and, and like, or how do you come up with your ideas of how to do a specific Well, scene? actually, actually there's, a, there's like a big archive here okay. in this head, because I've seen thousands of movies and I've done a lot of things and I'm watching every day something um, and then it's like it, it's it's it depends also on the location because I can sit on my on, in, in, at home and think about great great shots, but if I don't have the location and the the possibilities to do it, um, it doesn't make so much sense. So it it's more like the visualization starts when we know the locations where we're going to shoot, and then it's more effective to think what shots are. Are we able to do in this certain location? So that's how how it works usually. And the funny thing is, I walk when I walk around and I see pretty often what the sun is doing, like reflecting from windows somewhere else, and it looks totally unnatural. <laughs> it's very often I see this looks so artificial, <laughs> but it's real sunlight. So and this is always like encouraging me to let it let let it go just. Do what you what you think, and don't think about natural, not natural, whatever. Because the sun, the stuff the sun does, is so unbelievable great. We cannot really. It's not in our business to deal, to do stuff like this. But uh, uh, forget about all the natural things. Just do what you like to do. And if you want to have a, a hard sunlight somewhere, just do it. If it, the sun is outside or not. So like I'm, I'm I'm losing up a little bit. Like I'm not. I don't care less and less the more I'm in the business about um, authentic stuff because authenticity is not really. It, it's different. It's like uh, um, individual how you perceive it. Like how you think this is authentic. I think this is authentic. So it doesn't matter. It's just my interpretation of the moment, of the scene, of the script, whatever. So, so I do it like I want to. I mean, maybe it's a bit like when you're in a when you're doing a solo part. It's your interpretation. Of course, the first step is to really put the score in front of you, and then look note for note. What does the composer really write? What does he really want? That's the first step, of course. And then later, as you get more familiar with the piece, you can start to, you know, make your own decisions and and get creative and. Even, even sometimes change something that's that's printed. I know it's a very sacred thing for classical musicians and almost a crime. But sometimes we just do that. And if it serves the music, then I think it's very much supportable to do that. If it serves only you and only makes you look better, but actually it makes no sense musically, then better not to do it. But it's a very puristic way of thinking. It's difficult to always keep that, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone breaks the rules.